Hi there everyone, welcome back to the channel and welcome to another monthly update from the Dank Cave. Uh, so, our month has flown by. Uh, so we're back for another review uh, and today I'm going to do a little bit of a review again of what's been built over the last month. Uh, we'll then dive into some of the stuff that's been bought and I'd like to talk about stuff that's in progress coming up soon and potentially some of the the next video builds uh so i'd like to say a big thank you to everyone who's who's subscribed and liked the the stuff so far uh the video build series on on the the aoshima nissan fair lady uh the feedback on that has been excellent so so thank you to everyone who's subscribed liked and, and everyone who's left a comment as well it's really appreciated that the subscriptor subscription count is now up to uh, something like 120, which you know is absolutely fantastic. Uh, it's it's nice to see that people uh, seem to enjoy the work that I do. So uh, big thank you to everyone for that. Uh, so let's head straight on over to the bench and let's start to look at uh, some of the stuff that's been built over the last month. Uh, we'll, we'll talk through what's been done. So. Enjoy the video. So first up on the the what's been built category for this month is this, which is the Revel uh, 1976 Ford Torino. Uh, so they, this kit was uh, pretty much built from the box. Uh, not a not a huge huge amount of additions to it. Uh, so so the box comes with the Starsky and Hutch decals, uh, which a lot of you will know. However, I decided to go down a slightly different route and decided to go for what I think is a very 70s look. Uh, so I had a look through uh, old paint catalogue for Ford and, and based on a recommendation from uh, from Paul at ISM, decided to go and order some paint from Paint Nuts. Uh, now they will basically mix uh, any paint you want as long as you have a colour code uh, and it comes in a little pot like this. Uh, I think it's a 50 mil pot. Uh, the paint code was 3659, which is apparently called Ginger Bronze Metallic. Now, it doesn't look very metallic, but the colour does look like it was printed uh, in the, the image of the, the original colour book that I saw uh, for Ford from the 1970s. Uh, so that's the, the base coat. Uh, it's 2K using Pro Range 2K, uh, which has produced a... a very very nice finish on it. Uh, everything else was, was mainly standard. I, I left most of the kit chrome, uh, certainly on the bumpers and, and the wheels. Uh, around the windows that was done using bare metal foil. Uh, so the interior, so that was painted using, uh, I think it was a mixture of Ravel Aqua, I think tan, beige and dark earth. Which again was to give it that kind of 1970s kind of tan leather and brown look. Uh, and then I've added uh, some ignition cables under the bonnet. So I was using some 0.3mm jewellery wire, which is which is not great as ignition cables, but you know, it, it does add a little bit of kind of uh, visual detail on the engine. So, so as you can see, I've just propped the bonnet up with basically a matchstick. So, so yeah, so that was uh, that was finished at the the start of April. Uh, we'll just flip it over and have a look underneath. So you know, fairly standard underneath, not much added. But yeah, overall, really nice kit. Uh, so that was bought from Amazon uh, in the UK. I think it was shipped from Amazon EU, but the the price for the UK I think was was under sixteen pounds. It was fifteen pounds something. So for that price and the quality of this kit, that's an absolute bargain. It's a really, really enjoyable to build, and really pleased with the finish. So next up in in April uh, was a kit I built for the Road Car Group build over at ISM on Facebook, and that is this, uh, which is the. Ayashima uh, Nissan Fair Lady Z Nismo 07. Uh, this is also the one that there's a video build series on on, uh, on the YouTube channel for, uh, which is in three parts. Uh, 
So the base coat on this is calsonic blue from, from Gravity Spain. Uh, basically I had some left over from building a, a calsonic skyline last year. But then I decided to do a, a custom decal job uh, for the bonnet and roof. Uh, so they are home printed decals. Once printed they work like ordinary water slide decals, work absolutely fine. Uh, using micro scale uh, liquid decal film to seal them, soak them with water, stick them on a model like you would any other decal. Uh, so this is a fairly basic curbside kit. Uh, very little on the underside. Uh, I've kept the stock wheels that came with it. Uh, quite like the chrome on them. Uh, it is it is lowered as well because uh, the kit comes and you can do it as a lowered or standard option. And then the number plate is a custom decal as well. But yeah, so really pleased with this. Uh, Pro Range 2K again. Uh, but yeah, a really, really nice kit to build. I think the only area I wasn't entirely pleased with is the fit of the bonnet. Uh, it wasn't brilliant, kind of around the edges and in the room where the headlights go. But aside from that, went together absolutely lovely and, and really enjoyed it. Uh, so you can watch the video build series on my YouTube channel. I'll stick a link up uh, at the end of the video and probably stick a link in the description as well to the playlist for that. So yeah, so really nice, really enjoyable. So technically in April, uh, there was only two kits finished, but as we're just past the bank holiday weekend in the UK, and over that weekend I got a little bit more time at the bench, I did manage to finish a couple of other kits. So the first of which was this. So this is the Ravel 24 scale uh, Mercedes AMG GT. Again, this was another reasonably cheap kit bought through Amazon. Uh, Ravel kits on Amazon are an absolute bargain. Uh, and this kit is, is a lovely little kit to build. Uh, a few minor issues with I would say getting the bumper secured properly is 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 quite challenging. Uh, the fit of the the kind of chassis into the body is quite tight, but it will go in. But other than that, uh, this kit was was an absolute pleasure to build. Really enjoyable. So uh, it comes in yellow plastic. So I primed it in UMP white primer, and then the base color was actually a mix of Ravel yellow and Ravel orange. So I think it's number 12 and number 30 orange. Uh, so I think that's two, uh, five parts yellow to two parts orange, something like that. Uh, so it kind of gives it it's like quite close to McLaren orange. But yeah, so that was, that was airbrushed on, uh, left to dry and then Pro Range 2K again. Uh, so in this kit, this was the first kit that I've used the UMP polishing system on. I uh, had previously been using Novus. Uh, I used the UMP one on this, and I'm really impressed with the results. Uh, I think I think the the compound and the polish actually have a finer grit compared to Novus, and I think they actually it produces a better result. So so I'm really pleased with this. So the wheels in this came originally chromed, so they were dechromed. Uh, using some bleach, which took oh, close to two days to get that chrome off. So then they were reprimed using UMP Black and then given a coat of Ravel Aqua Gloss Black. And then the very edge of the rim, then that was uh, infilled with some Molotov chrome from the pen. So again, gives that nice uh, chrome lip on, on Black Alloys. So overall, yeah, really pleased with, with how this has come out. So again, th this kit, I suppose the only, I don't know if I'd call it a flaw, but I think the only downside is uh, basically underneath this, there is a complete engine. And in the back, there is a rear, uh, the gearbox in the rear and the diff in the rear, which is completely unseen once the kit is actually closed up. You just don't see it whatsoever. Uh, beneath this engine cover, you just don't see the engine. It's just just not visible. So while it's worth putting them together, it's probably not really worth painting them, to be honest, because they're not really visible. So, But other than that, you know, the, the kind of top engine cover looks reasonably okay. Came up very well. 
So yeah, very pleased with how that's come out. And then finally, uh, finished uh, relatively late last night, uh, was this. So this is the 172nd scale uh, Ravel F14D Tomcat. Uh, so this, again, was built using the box scheme. Uh, I quite like building, building the box schemes. Uh, it's often what I see on the box that makes me want to kit in the first place anyway. So, so yeah, so this was, this was originally primed... I will say the construction of this, uh, there's a lot of filler needed. Uh, the fit is not brilliant. Uh, there are a lot of areas that, that are let down. It's a relatively old mould. When you see it in the box, it, it looks relatively new. But when you start building it, you realise it's actually not great. Uh, so yeah, so quite quite a challenging build. Lots of filler, lots of sanding. An amount of rescribing as well. So once all that construction was done... Uh, it was primed in UMP black, and then I managed to get some of the Ushi uh, spray templates. Uh, they actually worked quite well, and then basically kind of over sprayed in white to give that kind of marble effect, and then starting started building up uh, the grey colours. Uh, can't remember the, the specific greys I used, but they ca all came from. Uh, this Vallejo uh, model air set. It's a US Navy colours from the 1970s to present. Uh, so I think it was, yeah, it was medium grey, dark ghost grey and light ghost grey. Basically it was the three colours used. So yeah, so they all went down quite well. Once that was all nicely dried, uh, decals were applied. Uh, then it was given a wash using Humbrol Blue Grey enamel wash which I mixed with a little bit of white just to just to tone it down a little bit uh, this is one of those kits on, on, on 72nd scale kits I, I don't always like you know completely kind of washing and having that contrast in the panel lines because sometimes it can look it doesn't look quite right it looks sometimes looks out of scale but the, the panel lines of this kit were so deep it was kind of one of those kits that you kind of had to go with it so if you've got the panel lines and they kind of stand out anyway of like well let's just go with the washes anyway so uh, but yeah reasonably happy with the way it came out so it's it's a blue gray slightly lightened and then lightened a little bit further on the underside uh, just to rein in that kind of heavy contrast a little bit so then that was done as a wash in addition i kind of used the wash to kind of stipple uh and kind of add some staining to the top surface, add a bit of a kind of tonal variation overall. And that was done on the underside as well. So you can see there's a lot of, there's quite a lot of dirt staining kind of left on the bottom uh, as a result of that wash. So that was all left dry. Then gave it a coat of aqua gloss. Uh, sorry, gave it a coat of Vallejo matte varnish. So again, that toned everything down. And then I went back with some UMP uh, water-based wash. I uh, used a concrete colour, which is a light grey colour, which was then used to kind of basically lighten, lighten the colour on some of the panels and give a further kind of tonal colour variation on on that grey scheme. So, so yeah, I, I'm pretty pleased with the result. Uh, finished it late last night, but, you know, it, it's turned out as a nice kit. Uh, so apparently, according to the instructions and what I could find, the, the upside end US round will is correct. It's what was applied to the aircraft. So, so yeah, so pretty pleased with that. Uh, challenging kit, probably not for the beginner, but once it goes together and you get all that filling done, actually it, it kind of builds up into a nice kit and looks like an F-14, which, you know, I, I built a number of them when I was younger. One of my favourite kind of uh, Cold War era aircraft, I suppose it is now, uh, but probably one of my favourite aircraft of all time. So, you know, going back to build one, nice kind of nostalgia hit for me and another aircraft built in, in the collection. So that's the, that's the what's built bit. 
Uh, I'm going to have a run through what was bought. I think rather than drag out the boxes, uh, you know, for example, like this, there's one of the things I bought, which is this, uh, not a Ravel kit, the Shelby Mustang GT 350H. Uh, I'm actually going to, we'll, we'll switch over and we'll, we'll run through, uh, we'll say a quick view of some photos of the boxes as they come in and we'll, we'll run through each of the kits that have been bought. There is a lot, so bear with me, uh, but we'll have a quick chat about each of them and then we'll come back to here and we'll have a look at uh, a couple of other things that have been bought uh, in terms of tools, paints, etc. We'll, we'll run through them. Uh, so all the kits that have been bought, there's quite a lot came off Amazon because uh, they're pretty cheap, a couple of eBay finds. And then I did buy a couple of kits from UMP Retail as well. Uh, their their prices you know for new kits are extremely competitive and, and they have a reasonably good selection as well uh so let's have a look over there on the laptop screen so uh first off on the the list of what's been bought so there's the Revell uh 68 dodge charger and 25th scale uh, another nice looking kit from Ravel, and again something that was picked up pretty cheap off Amazon. So uh, really pleased with that. Uh, Twenty odd quid, I think, and yeah, it looks a pretty decent kit. Uh, we'll get to that at some point. Uh, my friend over at ISM, uh, Yuval, he's currently building that at the moment, so it'll be interesting to hear his feedback on the kit. So that's the uh, the Dodge Charger, sixty eight Dodge Charger. Uh, also picked up the 24th scale Audi R8 from Ravel. Again, that was another bargain uh, found on Amazon. Uh, don't know too much about the kit. I've seen a few uh, video builds online. Uh, a few people have built it. I've not seen any major complaints. But yeah, another cheap kit. Another supercar in the collection. Uh, we'll get to that at some point in the future, no doubt. So next up on the bought list is the uh, Shelby Mustang uh, GT350H, uh, which just saw the desk a couple of minutes ago. Uh, maybe not the best of kits I've seen from Ravel. Uh, it, it's I, I think it's a probably slightly older mold, but I do I do like the the finished scheme. The black and the gold looks really nice. So I thought, yeah, I'll pick that up once again. A bargain. Uh, from Amazon in the UK. Uh, so then there was the Mercedes AMG GT, which you've already seen the finished model. So that's been bought, built, and finished in the same month uh, when it arrived from you guessed at Amazon. I uh, was really pleased with how it looked, and yeah, just kind of dive straight into it. So amongst the 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 buying as well, there was a couple of kits uh, picked up from UMP. So I ended up picking up the uh, Ferrari 512BB uh, from Fujimi and the ZXRR Ninja from Tamiya in 12th scale, uh, which will add to the kind of MotoGP bike collection. Also picked up the UMP Apex uh, airbrush, which, you know, for the price point of that from UMP, uh, I have to say really impressed with it. Works very, very well. That AMG GT that I showed you finished earlier, that was basically completely done using the Apex. Uh, I think the only thing I didn't do was the 2K, which I'm now using uh, a H&S Infinity for 2K at the moment. But all the acrylic work was done with the Apex. Uh, seems to spray fantastically well. Uh, in fact, I think the Tomcat, yeah, the Tomcat, all the paint work on the Tomcat was all done with the, with, with the Apex as well. Uh, so another Ravel kit uh, picked up from Amazon was the 1970 Dodge Challenger. Uh, so that one, uh, Paul at ISM is currently building on his channel. He's got a video build series on that. Uh, in a very, very nice green colour uh, with matte bonnet, matte black bonnet. Uh, so that's in progress with Paul at the moment. Uh, another kit that Paul actually recommended was the, the 66 Pontiac GTO for another Ravel kit, another Amazon find. Uh, again, looks quite good in the box. 
Uh, that one will probably sit sit on the shelf for another few years. We'll, we'll get to it eventually, but you know it's another kit in the stash, so uh, not to be complained about. Uh, then we've got this, which is another Ravel kit. So this one was found on Amazon again. Uh, it's the newer Shelby, Ford Shelby GTH 2006 model. Uh, I just thought it'd be nice to have the older one and the newer one in that black and gold finish. Uh, almost like a pair of them on the shelf together. Uh, so this this was really cheap off Amazon. It came up a warehouse special because there's some damage on the side of the box. So nothing inside the box was damaged. It's all absolutely fine. Uh, so that was... That was... Uh, that was a nice little bargain to find. Today I ended up deciding to pick up another few bits and pieces from UMP. Uh, on my last order I realised I didn't get any uh, airbrush cleaner or airbrush thinner to pick that up. But also the UMP polishing system and the Tamiya 4 GT in 24 scale. Which looks a very nice looking kit also. Uh, so along with that, uh, an eBay find was this, which is the... The Gullwing uh, SLS AMG uh, from Mercedes. So having got and kind of started uh, the newer AMG GT, I thought it'd be nicer, nice to build this one as well. Uh, again, to sit alongside it as the kind of modern Mercedes sports car collection. And then there was one final eBay find, which was uh, the 125th scale Corvette C5R uh, from Ravel. So yeah, so that, that's basically all the kits that have been bought. Uh, I guess you've seen the the apex and the pictures already. So uh, let's have a look at some of the other things that turned up. So a couple of the other items that, that turned up uh, over the last month were uh, some decals. So, probably last month, a while back, uh, I picked up the Bell Kids Manta 400 and I was looking for a specific scheme uh, and found a set of decals on eBay, uh, which I ended up buying. Uh, now, when they were delivered, uh, they were delivered on this. And, and basically, this is basically a sheet of decals. Uh, none of the outlines are cut. The register is not brilliant. I wouldn't even say the colour was brilliant. So today look like they're either inkjet or laser jet printed. Uh, and then probably sprayed with a clear coat. They weren't cheap. But at the time it, it was it was the closest I could find to the scheme I wanted. So so we went with them. So then a couple of weeks later, uh while searching, I then also found uh on another website, this set from Reggie Models, which is basically the same car, uh, just from a different specific rally. So these ones, the inkjet printed ones, I think were from the Circuit of Ireland, uh, 1986, which, if my memory serves me correctly, was one of the first rallies I was ever at. Uh, these ones are from the Manx Rally from the same year. Uh, so I may be able to you know, combine bits of them if I want to do the the Rothmans Rally version, or I may just stick with the, the Reggie model ones. And I mean, you can see even even through the kind of backing paper, you, you can just see that the the color is just so much better, the clarity and and kind of outline the decals just look so much better. So yeah, so really pleased with them. So along with that set, because I kind of couldn't resist myself, uh, I also picked up another Manta four hundred decal scheme. Uh, which is this, uh, which is the Andrews Heat for Hire car, which I think is Russell Brooks. Yes, yeah, Russell Brooks. So, I mean, he's going buy another Manta 400 kit. So while I was there, I also picked up another set of decals. Uh, so probably the back end of last year, I think I bought the the new new uh, BMW 320e46. And I wasn't too keen on the kit scheme that came with it. Uh, so I've been looking around at various sets and finally kind of spotted this yellow Hasse Roder uh, car. 
uh, with several set of decals for that case and they look a, a nice set of decals uh, from LB production. So they'll probably go in the box and be used on that at some point. Uh, so yeah, so really pleased with that as and the sticker from Spot Model as well, which will add to the collection. So so those last year sets all came from Spot Model. These were a random set from eBay, which yeah. Uh, I may try one or two of them. They may actually go down very well. It may just be the, the you know, the fact that they are probably home printed and uh, done on one full sheet. Uh, I mean, I've done home printed decals, but then I'm not selling them on eBay. So, uh, so in addition to that and all the other uh, stuff that was picked up off in terms of kits and tools, uh, I also picked up a few of these. Uh, I think I picked up three or four. Tamiya rattle cans, a uh, couple of colours that I wanted thinking of some future projects. So uh, I do find the, the rattle cans decant and spray very well. Having tried that on the Ducati, quite pleased with the result that came out. So, so there we go. So that's all the buying side, I think, done. Uh, I suppose next it'd be good to, to talk about what's coming up. So. So first of all, just starting on uh, ISM on Facebook, on the, the the group build page, there's the TV and movie group build. Uh, so that group build page has uh, been run by Alan Parker over at ISM, part of the Friday Night Live crew. Uh, so I'm going to build this, this Honda NXX. So my plan is... It's going to be uh, done as the Acura version. Uh, so it'll be a Winston Wolf car from Pulp Fiction. So I think it's an all over silver, certainly metallic color. Uh, and I think that'll be, it'll be a fairly straightforward build, uh, pretty much straight from the box. To be honest, in the film, you don't see the car that much, but it is quite memorable because it's, well, it's Winston Wolf. So, so yeah, so another Tamiya kit to work on which is nice, I've had that in the stash since last year at some point. Probably won't be a video build, but uh, I'll keep updates kind of posted as we go along. So, what will be a video build, uh, which has already started a little bit, is gonna be this. So this is the Academy 72nd scale Super A Tendard, Libya 2011 edition. Uh, so I've done an airplane, I've done a car, and I'm now going to do an airplane again. So when I started looking at this, I'd kind of thought about doing a video build anyway, but once I got into the kit, I uh, realised actually it's an extremely simple kit. There's not a huge amount in there. So I think, so for example, that's, that's the entire cockpit. Uh, it's a seat control column. Uh, and there's the instrument panel in the box somewhere as well. So basically, Academy provide not even a decal for that cockpit, which is a little bit disappointing. Uh, so it means a little bit of work just to give it, you know, at least a look of some kind of detail in there. But that'll probably put me to having the canopy shut, which is fair enough. But yeah, uh, aside from that, I mean, the kit itself, you know, it's got you know engraved panel lines not hugely detailed uh but a little bit to work with uh again it'll give me an option to do some of the kind of gray coloring effects and changes in tone and color similar to what i've done on the uh the tonka recently so yeah so watch out for that i'm probably going to do that as a single maybe a single or two part video i'll see how much interesting footage comes out of it but that should hopefully be a fairly quick build and Probably expect to see at least part of that out in probably a week or two. Uh, maybe we'll do kind of one construction and then one just on paint and paint and weathering. But we'll see how it works out. But that's that probably that's definitely going to be a video build. So one of the other group builds in progress over at ISM uh, is a seventy second scale group build. So I actually have decided to build this for that group build. So this is the, the Airfix Bristol Blenheim Mark IV. Uh, so my plan for this is that this will probably be a video build as well to go along with the, the group build. Uh, probably going to do it in, in the RAF scheme. 
uh, I am thinking about maybe doing the box scheme, but at the moment I'm kind of leaning towards the RF scheme, mainly because I know I have all the paints for it anyway. Uh, although, you know, for the, the French version, yeah, you could, you could mix most of those paints. So really, so there's, there's nothing really done with that. I think some of the parts are off the sprue. Uh, but yeah, that's, that's, yeah, that's going to be a video build, but I think this will be a multi-part video build. And we'll kind of work our way through that. So that's definitely going to be an upcoming. And then, as kind of mentioned earlier, uh, there's this GT350H. So I think this is going to be the next video build for a car. Uh, so I probably won't start that until after I make some progress on the Super A10 Dart. But yeah, really looking forward to this. Uh, just the challenge of getting that gloss black finish done well. Challenge on the bare metal foil again kind of all kind of techniques that probably weren't seen in any of my video builds to date so yeah looking forward to that so so yeah so back to me so there we go uh that's the end of another monthly review uh so in the previous section when i referred to last night that's actually the night before because i didn't get to finish this video until today whereas i recorded the other bits yesterday so just so we're clear on that. Uh, so thank you to everyone who's watched. Uh, thank you to everyone who's subscribed so far. If you haven't, please give a subscribe and a like. Feel free to leave a comment. Uh, I'll try and answer everyone, any questions, whatever you have. Um, before I finish here, just would like to say a big thank you to Paul at ISM, uh, who's given my channel a shout out a couple of times on, on his live shows uh, and in his last bench update. So that's really appreciated. And a big thank you to Luke Carswell at Black Rifle Model Works uh, with an X, uh, who also gave a shout out to the channel a couple of weeks ago on his Saturday live show. Uh, if you haven't subscribed to Luke's channel, go and have a look for Black Rifle Model Works. I'll put a link in the description. He's getting close to a thousand subscribers. So if you haven't subscribed, give him a little bit of a boost and, and get him up to that thousand mark. Uh, maybe one day I'll, I'll get there myself as well who knows uh so yeah thank you everyone for watching i uh, hope you've enjoyed it and we'll see you soon with uh, the next video build hopefully coming up in a couple of weeks time so thank you everyone and bye bye